Hello and welcome to 6502 Assembly Programming. We'll be continuing on from the previous uh, video. So this will be, I guess, part two of the Game of Life. They were programming a Game of Life and uh, part nine of the whole series, I think. So if, you, if you're jumping in here, you might want to go back and check the previous ones. Alright, so a couple of things I want to go back to. Um, before we get started on anything new here, um, I mentioned last time uh, you can see in the in the emulator output how it looks like our randomness isn't terribly random. And the reason for that is that we're pulling the random number. Uh, let's see, where is it here? Yeah, we're pulling the random number from this um, register that I called random, which is at D41B. In, in memory. Um, that's actually a register on the SID chip, the sound chip. And what it is, it's an oscillator. It's taking the value of an oscillator at a, at a given point in time. And the oscillator is, is putting out a wave. Um, it's actually a, it's a, no, it's a noise oscillator is what it's there for. So I don't know what the wave really looks like, if it's a smooth sine wave or something jerky. But the point is, it's a, it's a wave that's moving up and down. And so if you pull that value over and over really quickly, you're going to tend to get numbers that are close to each other. And since I'm checking the seventh bit, the high bit of that number, um, then if it's a number, it, and the, the number it returns is going to be between 0 and 255. So that's going to be sort of the height of your wave from 0 to 255. Since I'm checking the high bit of that number, then it's going to be on for any number 128 or higher, and it's going to be off for any number 127 or lower. So as that wave is going up and down, if I pull numbers off that quickly enough, I'm going to get numbers that are pretty close to each other, and I'll get a few in the top part of the wave, and then I'll get a few in the bottom part of the wave, and then a few in the top part, and then a few in the bottom, and so on. And so that's what you can see happening in our uh, emulator here is it's getting a few, you know, they're, they're kind of clustered together because this this is being, you know, it, it's, it's, grabbing a, it's grabbing another number every few um, microseconds and so that's, you know, it's just, it's just getting them off of that too fast. So what you do about that or what you can do about it is you need to tell the um, you need to tell the SID chip that you want the fastest possible frequency because I think by default it's a fairly low frequency and so that wave is going up and down fairly slowly and we need to make it go up and down as fast as possible and so that's what this code right here does that I pulled out of a book and so I'm just going to copy it bring it over here we'll put it up towards the top um, Let's see, fill screen. Let's just put it right at the very top. Okay, so that what that does is it sets there's a two byte value for the frequency at D4OE and D4OF and so we set those both to the maximum value and then this noise waveform thing um, I don't know exactly what that's about but basically you're just telling it you want just just noisy values you don't want you want noisy values as fast as you can get them and so later when we pull values from that we should get more randomness um, let's see Garbage data, line 35. Oh, that's right, because I plugged that in there. We've got just kind of some stuff here for now. I'm actually not even sure if it'll run, but... 
Yeah, it looks it looks a bit it looks a bit more random now, but still I think I'm pulling values off of it so fast that it's having trouble. Let's see what else something else we can try. I'm checking the highest bit. So like I said, values values from 128 to 255 are going to be one number and values from 0 to 127 are going to be the other number, the other possibility. If I change this to let's see branch of overflow set, that'll be the sixth bit and that should work better. So let's try that because that bit is going to change back and forth twice as often as the seventh bit. Yeah, that's that's much better. It still it looks like it has a bit of a pattern to it, but a lot less of one than it did before. So we'll we'll go with that for now. We might be able to make it more more random later on. Do I got it stuck? There we go. Okay. So that was one thing I wanted to do before we get started anything new here. The other thing was this is in bounds routine. Um, I was reading up a little bit, and you don't want to use branch if plus or branch if minus on compares unless you're actually comparing signed numbers, numbers that can be positive or negative. Um, the reason being that when you the branch if plus and branch if minus treat the treat the comparison as if it was negative and positive numbers. And so if you have an 8-bit number that has the high bit set, like say 250, if you say 250 minus 40, that is going to have that is going to end up with the minus bit set because it's thinking that it's thinking 250 is a, is a negative number because of the way negative numbers work in in binary so we don't want to use branch of plus here we want to use branch of carry set because if the carry is set that means that the number was greater than or equal to let's see or it means the register was greater than or equal to the number it's being compared to. So we'll change these to 40 and 25. And then we'll say, okay, branch of carry set, meaning if X was greater than or equal to 40, we want to branch down to here and return 0. And the same thing here, if Y is greater than or equal to 25, we want to branch down to here. And otherwise, it's inbounds. We want to leave A as, as 1. Okay. So that should fix that. Now we'll come back up here to kind of the, the core of our routine at the moment. So right here, we're getting the value from the cell. We're getting the value from the screen memory. And we're comparing it to 20 to decide whether this... Um, to decide whether the cell is alive, then we're branching ahead if it's dead. If it, you know, if those compare, if those are equal, we're branch ahead. Otherwise, we've got to we've got to add one to all of its neighbors. So that's what we're going to do here. All right. So I was thinking about this, and I was trying to think of a way to do this in a loop, since we need to do it to each of eight neighbors, but each neighbor is in a different direction. So like the first neighbor, if you think up and to the left, you have to subtract one from the X coordinate and one from the Y coordinate. You know, the up and to the right, you're going to add one to the X, but subtract one from the Y and so on. You've got to go around it. And I was trying to think, is there a way to put a loop from one to eight and then programmatically figure out what you need to do for each one and I basically decided there isn't, at least not, not anything simple um, that wouldn't be more complicated than just doing it eight times. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to do it eight times. Um, so, but we're not going to, we're going to do as little of it right here as possible. So what we'll do, let's move that down. 
we loaded X and we loaded Y, decremented X and decremented Y. So this is going to be the one up left. And then we'll jump to subroutine um, increment neighbor. Okay, so we'll let that subroutine do all the actual incrementing. And, and also it'll do the checking if something is in bounds. So it'll do all that work. All we're going to do right here is just do that eight times. So we'll load X again with XX, load Y again with YY. And this time we will just decrement the Y and not the X. And that'll just be the one straight up. So we're going to subtract one from the Y. That'll be the row up. We'll leave X the same so we're directly above it. And then JSR inc neighbor again. Okay, so it's going to you know it's going to be kind of an obvious pattern here. Okay, so we did up and left. We did up. Now we'll do up and right. Where we'll decrement the y, but we'll increment the x, and that's going to be up and right. We'll load them again. This time we'll just decrement, or this time we'll just increment the X. That's going to be the one to the right. Then we'll do one where we increment the X and increment the Y. That'll be down right. Let's see, and then if we do one where we just increment the Y, that's going to be just down. And then see if we decrement the X increment the Y down left and decrement X that's just left all right so that should be our eight things that we have to do so let's just stick an RTS on the end of that And we'll put our plus right there that we were plussing to back up here. I think that should still be close enough. It's okay to jump there. All right. So ink neighbor then. First thing ink neighbor has to do is find out is this cell, is the cell, is the neighbor cell in bounds? And so it does that by jumping to is in bounds. And it's going to return with um, 1 if it is and 0 if it isn't. So let's first of all add a little documentation here to say increment the value at xy if in bounds. Okay, so we jumped to the subroutine. Now we want to compare the accumulator to 0. And that's going to tell us if it's in bounds. If it isn't in bounds, so if it's equal to zero, we want to branch if equal ahead to the plus and just pop back out of this routine. We don't have anything to increment because we're not in bounds. If we are in bounds, then what do we need to do? Let's see. Okay. Then we have... We, we still have our value in cell telling us where we look. Well, no, we don't because that's this value here is the original cell that we're working around. It's not the it's not the address of the neighbor. It's the address of the original cell. So what we need to do now, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, what we're going to need to do now is we still have X. Hmm. Think about this for a second. Okay. Um... We need to find the location, the memory location of this cell that we're dealing with. And we need to do that with, so we need to call XY to cell to do that. 
but xy to cell is going to clobber. Hmm. It's going to clobber our values that we already have there. Clobbering cell isn't a problem, but clobbering yy and xx is a problem because we're still using those up here. We're still loading them after each one. So I either need another set of x and y's that I can use. <clears throat> Um, and that's probably going to be the thing to do. Otherwise, what I would have to do is restore them after each one of these jumps, and I don't want to have to do that. That would be an ugly, ugly solution. So let's do this. Let's have... What if, I'm just thinking here, thinking to myself here, what if when we call x, y to cell, we pass the values in, x, in the x and y registers rather than, <clears throat> rather than in, the, in those memory locations? Let's see if that would, let's look down here and see if that would work. If we're using, I don't think we're using x and y down here otherwise. Now it doesn't look like it. <clears throat> so I don't think there's any reason we couldn't pass those values in the X and Y registers here instead of in these locations. Is there? Well, there. Well, let's see. There's this load A. That would just turn into a transfer Y to A. Same thing there. I think that would be okay. Let's look back up here. This is where sometimes it would probably help to draw this stuff out. Um, if, let's see, if this was... Yeah, because here's the thing. I want to I want to be able to leave the x and y coordinates of the original cell, the cell we're working around. I want to be able to leave them alone as we go through all these increment neighbors. And so that would be okay if we do this. We load a with the low, with the x coordinate store it there and also transfer a to x and then load a with the y coordinate store it in the y coordinate location and transfer a to y and then we jump here Yeah, that should be okay, because then we jump here. We just need to change x, y to cell. All right, let's go down and do that. Fix that first of all. Instead of getting y, instead of getting that from there, we need to transfer y to a. And then down here, transfer x to a. Change this line to say the y register and the X register. Okay, come back up. So now, now in increment neighbor, we already have X and Y 
of our new cells the way we want them. It's okay if we clobber the cell location value because we're not going to need it again. We've already gotten that out of it. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. So we can go ahead and call, what is it called? XY to cell. That's going to put the value we want in the cell. Then we load A from cell, comma. Let's see. Though then we have to also um, load Y with zero because this is a this requires an offset. So we have to do it like this. Load A from cell, comma Y. Increment. Or actually, we don't. We don't. That's an extra step. We just increment that location that's pointed to by cell indexed by y, and that should be it. Then return. I think that is it right there. Um, okay. So coming back up here, then we actually have two. <clears throat> Excuse me, we have two loops starting here. So I'm going to call this one um, X loop. And that's where it, well, that's not where it starts. It starts after we set, uh, let's see. <clears throat> Let me stop and think again. <clears throat> Okay, so the XX and YY are the locations of the initial cell that we're working around as we go through these. Okay, that's that's fine. Um, yeah, that'll be fine. And so, let's stop and think. Think, think, think. So I think X loop actually starts here and Y loop starts here after we initialize those. Okay. When we get down here then and we've done like to here We need to increment the Y loop or increment Y Y because that's the inner loop. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the only thing we need to add here then then is on each loop then we need to load x from xx and load y from yy because we get new ones at that point. And we have to load up x and y for when we call our x xy to cell here. All right. Okay, so we increment y and then, or wait a second, decrement y because we started out with the high values, right? Yeah, started out with the high values. Um, Actually, I think let's turn this around. Let's start with zero and zero. 
and then so I don't know why I loaded A with zero first. Why did I do that? Why don't I just load X with zero, store X, load Y with zero, store Y. That simplifies things a little, doesn't it? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So then, when we get down here, we want increment increment y compare to twenty four, and then branch if not equal, all the way back up to y loop. Then if we fall through there, if it did reach equal, if it got finished with a Y loop, we want to increment X, X. Okay, I, I need another step here. Increment Y, Y, load A from Y, Y, because we've got to, we can't compare a memory location to a to an absolute number. We've got to load it into something first. So we'll load it in the accumulator. Increment X, X load a from xx compare to th to to or no let's see this needs to be 25 we want to compare to the first thing that would be out of bounds branch if not equal up to x loop <clears throat> okay so taking a turn clears the work area, then it checks all the cells in the, oh, you know what? Okay, an ink neighbor, we're working on see here we want to be working on the working area not the screen area so we need to set a different offset and the offset where did we get the off or where did we put in the offset okay just we have a we have a memory value for that called offset let's um Capitalize that and make it a little more obvious what's going on there. Some of these uh, locations, I think they'll jump out at me a little more if I capitalize them. Although, well, wait a second. Now this is getting ridiculous. I don't want to capitalize all this crap. Okay, never mind. We'll just capitalize offset because for some reason that appeals to me. Okay. So when we ink, when we ink neighbor, we need to set the offset to twenty. Store that in offset before we call x y to cell, so that our cell location is set up in the working area instead of the screen area. And where else did I call XY XY to sell? Need to make sure, yeah. So we always need to store an offset every time before calling that. All right. So let's see. As it is right now, this should do. 
think I'm gonna have to move. Let's see, I think. Let's make this. Let's put a label here called um, dead cell. And that'll be what we branch here. Okay, and then looping and so on and so forth. All right. And then it returns at the end. So this would eventually need to run more than once, but right now it's just going to run once loop through all the cells and then stop so that's what that's fine that's what we want for now it's time to illegal combination on 104 I can't do that huh okay I guess I can't do that I can't increment with Hmm, that surprised me. Let's see. Here we've got the... One of the books up here. Yep, it says you can give arguments to these instructions in four addressing modes. That does not include the indirect indexed mode okay well that's alright so we can load A from that increment it and store it back like so that should work okay now we get a problem with 105 Can't increment A. That's right. Can I do it? Uh, can I do it this way? Can I load X from that, increment X, and store X back? No. can load from it, but I can't store to it like that. That's weird. Well, I think, um, I mean, there's, there's several different ways you could do it. I just, incrementing seems like a cheaper, a cheaper way. But I guess there is no just increment the accumulator command. So we'll just... clear carry add with carry one I guess that's one way to do it <clears throat> I might look on I might check on that later because I thought I could I thought I could use load and store from from the X register using this method but maybe not all right Okay, so there's our code. Our code is now 155 bytes long. So it's starting to starting to look like something. There's the end of it. Okay. I don't have any breaks set in that code, so let's just go ahead and try to run it. It made the it made the hearts. Now the question is, what does the working area look like? Because that's what we're, we only have one turn so far. It, it, 
it puts the it puts the hearts up. It puts up our our initial screen that was already working. Now we've added the part that goes through and looks at those looks at those values, walks through, finds all the living cells, and adds to their neighbors. So we want to look at the we want to look at two thousand and see what we see because see this matches up to the screen. 2000 is the first screen location on the top left and then 2001 is the next one to the right and so on. So if we look at that if we look at in on the on the emulator we've got a heart in the top left corner, right? And then there's a heart down to its you know down and to the right from it. So that heart in the top left corner has one neighbor and sure enough we have a one in the in the first position here so that's correct moving over to the right we have an empty cell and it has two neighbors and we have a two the next empty cell has two neighbors the next one is a heart it also has two neighbors if let's see we come across it's kind of hard to count on the on the emulator what's where but um one two three four five six seven eight nine we get to the ninth spot is a dead cell that has four neighbors and that's what we see here too so it looks like that could be working um Um, so let's see if I want to go 23FF, okay, and it goes right up to the end. Yeah, and the very last one here is a zero because it has no neighbors. I would say that's working. I would say that's working just fine. Um, okay, well, so the next step after that then, it's, it's set up the working area. Okay, so now we have the screen area and the working area. We have a thousand cells in the screen area that are represented by the hearts and the spaces. And we have a thousand cells in the working area that all have numbers based on how many neighbors they have. And if you go back and think about the rules of the game, if a cell, the only way a cell is going to be alive is if it has three neighbors then it's definitely alive if it has two neighbors and was alive then it's going to be alive otherwise it's going to be dead so what we want to do now is we want to walk through our coordinates again but we're going to need to check the uh, let's see we're going to need to check well, I guess we'd want to check the working area first, because if there's a three there, then we don't even need to check the screen. We can just go ahead and turn that cell on, make that cell alive. If there's a two in the working area, then we have to check the screen and see if it was alive before. If it was, it still is. Actually, you know, think, come to think of it. If it's a two, we can just leave it alone. Because if it was alive, it's going to stay alive. If it was dead, it's going to stay dead. So if it's a 3, we make it alive. If it's a 2, we leave it alone. If it's anything else, we kill it. We, we set it to be, you know, we set it to dead. Okay, so those are going to be, those are our three possibilities. So we need to walk through the working, yeah, we don't need to walk through the, the screen at all. We just need to walk through the working area and do this. Yeah. Okay. So that's right up here after this business. We'll set a label called um, new board because this is what we're doing here is we're taking we're, we're creating a new board based on the you know the values that we just created by checking all the neighbors. All right, so this is going to start out looking a lot like the top of this. Or let's see, yeah, we're going to do the same sort of stuff. We're going to load x with zero. Um, we probably need to store that 
NXX. We're going to load, we're going to need a label. Um, call it X loop 2, so we already used X loop. Load Y with 0, store Y into YY, Y loop 2. Okay. All right. Now we need to get the value from our working area. So we're going to have to do something like this. Let's just copy some of this stuff down here. Okay, since we're coming from the working area, we want 20. Store that in the offset, jump to X, Y to sell. We've got to load Y with 0 to use as our offset, load A from that, okay. Now, this is, now we've got the neighbor number for the cell in A. So we've got, now we have to check for our three possibilities. We have to check for, <clears throat> check for if there's three, check for if there's two, and then otherwise, what do we do? So first, let's check for if there's two, because that's the simplest one. If there's two, we just want to skip over this one and do nothing. So let's compare it to two. And if it's equal, we'll branch to plus, which will just be down here somewhere. Okay. Then we want to compare it to 3. And if it's 3, then we want to set, we want to bring to life the cell in the screen. So in that case, we need to store, we need to load A with 4, store that in offset. Let's see, we haven't messed up, maybe we have, we have messed up Y. We haven't messed up X, but we did, we did mess up Y. So we need to load Y from YY. It gets a little confusing sometimes. Too many Y's and X's and everything flying around. and set our cell location. Actually, you know what, we need to do that. Let's do that before we compare. No, hold on. Okay, if it if there's two if it's two, if the neighbor number is two, we just want to skip. Otherwise we either want to make it alive if it's three or dead if it's anything else. The offset business finding the location we want to do either way, so we could go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and do that and then do our comparing. But in the X, Y to sell thing, we're messing up our, um, I'm sure we're messing up A. Oh, yeah. So, when we compare to A right, when we compare right here, we've got to get A back. So, what we'll do is right here, we'll push A on the stack. And then here we'll pull A back off the stack. I think that'd be the best way to do that. We just need to store it somewhere while we do this cell figuring out business. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, because what we did here was set up our cell address. That's all we're doing right here is setting up our cell address. So we stored A away while we did that. Got it back here. And now we can compare. So if A is 3, then we want to... 
load a with or no we need to we need to branch first of all branch if not equal the head to something we'll, we'll put some labels on these things in a bit or more pluses or something let's see <clears throat> I guess it doesn't make any difference which which we use. We can branch if equal, branch if not equal, um, because we got to do we got to do some work either way. So let's compare to three, branch if not equal to plus. So then we need to make the cell alive. So we want to load a with the live value store that into cell comma y and then jump ahead over top of this stuff let's see yeah jump ahead over top of this stuff which is going to be load a with a space and store that into cell comma y And you know what? We don't even need this. We just need that. Okay, so... Compare to 3. If it's not equal to 3... Okay, I, I get these backwards and switch this. Compare to 3. If it is 3, then we want to make it alive. So we load A with the heart value and then jump to here to store it. Otherwise, we want to go here. Okay, let's just give these some dead new cell. Oops. Pluses are convenient, but not a, not the easiest thing to understand sometimes. So we compare to three, branch if equal dead, and then jump to new cell. Okay, I think that's going to be right. Let me check. Um, okay, so let's look at this again. We compare to two, branch if equal... To, um, we'll call it two cell. And that'll be down here, okay? Because that means we don't need to do anything to it. Then we save a. We get the location of the cell in in screen memory. Get our a back. Compare it to three. If it's equal. No, sorry, I did have that right before. If it's not equal to 3, we want to branch ahead to dead, which loads A with 20, stores, you know, which is a space, stores that in the cell, and we go on. If it is equal to 3, then we load A with the, um, the heart value, jump ahead here to new cell, and store it. And 2 cell, then, is down here. And then that's when we need to loop around so let's see we want to it's going to need to be quite a bit like this one up here yeah we're going to want it's easy to forget where you are I may need to break some of this stuff out into other Load Y from YY, load X from XX. Okay. May need to break some of this stuff out into other um, increment YY. Let's just go back up here and copy. Okay. 
Okay, so we increment yy, compare that. Why am I loading it into... Oh, yeah, because I need to do that. Compare it to 25. Branch. Okay, so we've got y loop 2, x loop 2. All right. And then... Did I have a plus up here anywhere? I don't think I did. No. Okay. One thing about assembly is it's harder to tell when you're looping than it is with languages that build that into the syntax. Um, your C style languages all have indentation or well you don't have to use the indentation but they they lend themselves to it with the braces and and uh, the way people generally indent. I could indent here but I don't think typically assemblers and this assembly mode doesn't seem to it's not doing it automatically. I mean, I could do it if I wanted to just make it do it, but um, anyway. All right, so this will then well, I guess that's it. This will I mean, not it for the whole program, but it's it for that part of it. This will then take the neighbor values and rebuild the screen memory based on the neighbor values. <clears throat> so if we assemble we're up to uh, 19a bytes now, however many that is. Um, Okay, I think it worked. It um, wiped out a bunch of... I mean, you you probably saw it there. It, it put up the screen with the heart spread all over it. And then it went across the screen and wiped out a bunch of them. So we should still have hearts. I'm, I'm looking at the memory. I'm looking at the working memory. We should still have hearts then anywhere there were threes in the working memory, and we don't. So I would say there's a problem. Um, I'll have to figure out what it is. Um, because, yeah, I'm seeing, like right here at the very beginning, we've got um, the second cell and the third cell should both be, should both have hearts in them. It looked kind of funny. I'm not sure what happened there. Let's see. Yeah, I did exactly the same thing again. That's a little puzzling. Now, that's not exactly the same, but there's definitely a pattern to the way it's cleaning them out. Um, and it's definitely not matching up to the zeros Okay, so there's something interesting going on. Don't know just what it is yet. Let's see. It's somewhere in this new board business. So we start the X loop, we start the Y loop the same way as before. <clears throat> we get we get A from. We get A from the cell location in working memory. That's what the 20 here does. We compared that to 2. And if it was equal to 2, we jumped on down here and went looping around then to the, to the next cell. Otherwise, we stored A on the stack. Set the screen offset and set our cell location. I wonder if I'm messing up the X and the Y here somewhere. Um, I don't think X, Y to cell messes up the X and Y coordinates. 
or the X and Y registers. Oh, well, no. It copies them to copies them to A, but it doesn't change them. And we're pulling A back out, comparing it to three, branching based on that, and then looping around. Okay. Well, let's see. I think what we want to do is <clears throat> let's find where new board starts. It's going to be a load X with zero. right after a branch if not equal okay is it this one yeah I think it is load A with Store that in the offset. Jump to subroutine, load Y with zero. Okay. Well, let's put a break then at basically right where new board starts, which is going to be right here at this. So 1388. All right, so we've got our, at, at that point, it's built the board, and it should have set up the neighbors. Yeah, okay, so we've got a set of, we got neighbors. Um, yeah, and it looks like the first one that would have a three would be, one, two, three, four, five, six, the eleventh one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so we've got our neighbors set up. <clears throat> now we're gonna walk forward and store that store that X, load Y, store Y, then load X and load Y back. Okay. So we're on zero zero right now. Load A with twenty. Oh, 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 oh. I see a problem. I keep doing this because in the in the monitor numbers are hexadecimal by default. In the assembler they're by they're decimal by default. And I should probably look and see if I can tell the assembler to make them hexadecimal because I keep forgetting that. This twenty is not or I, I don't want twenty, I want two zero in hexadecimal, so I need to say this. It's actually thirty two. In, in decimal so 20 over here 20 in decimal becomes one four in hexadecimal so as soon as I saw that I was like yeah that's that, that's a problem am I doing the same thing up here no see I, I was smart enough to get it right there um, so I'm surprised there isn't another place Where's the other place where I use that? Yeah, there, I got it right there, so. All right, let's try this again. <clears throat> okay, and it breaks. Now let's go ahead and continue. All right, that looks better. That looks more like what we're, what we're looking for. Um, It eventually broke out. I guess it just. I guess it got to the end of the program. We haven't finished up the 
the end of things here. Um, okay, so that appears to have worked. Um, now let's try it and actually check it. All right, it stopped after it built built the first board, set up the neighbors in working area. So let's look at working area. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The sixth, seventh, and eight cells in the top row should be should become hearts after the next iteration. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right now seven and eight are hearts, but now six, seven, and eight should become hearts. So let's see if that happens. Sure looks like it did. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, six, seven, and eight are now hearts. Okay. All right. Now, what we need to do and just continues. Okay. Now the question is, we we want this to keep running. <clears throat> So, let's say we want it to run 10 times. We'll set up another, another location here called count, or let's call it turns. That's more appropriate to what we're actually doing. E, all right. Actually, let's not, let's not waste a zero page location on that. Because this doesn't this isn't going to get calculated a lot. Okay, so take on take a turn, then we want to um, load a with let's say um, ten. Store that in turns. And then when we're done taking our turn all the way down here, end of turn, we would increment turns and branch, if not equal, up to new turn. What did I call it? It wasn't new turn, it was take turn. Take turn. All right. So now it should do it ten times. Oh, target out of range. Okay, I wondered about that. <clears throat> the problem is these branch um, branch commands can only go up to one hundred and twenty-eight or one hundred twenty-seven. Um, bytes in either direction. They're they're actually relative um, jumps, so they can't jump just anywhere in memory. They can only go either back. I think it's like back 128 or forward 127. And branching back to take turn is more than that. And so yeah, it's 189 bytes backwards. So what I need to do is I need to say branch if equal to turn done which will be right here, turn done, and otherwise jump back to take turn, because a jump can go anywhere. <clears throat> so what I'm doing is I'm saying increment turns, or not, not increment, decrement turns, because <clears throat> it's starting out at 10, and then if it's equal to zero, go ahead and jump down here to turn done and return. Otherwise, jump back to take turn and take another turn. Okay. Life. Uh, let's see. Let's um. Yeah, let's leave the break in there for now. Or I guess I took it out already. Okay, well it works. 
it's interesting how it's working. It um, the way it scans across the screen. It doesn't. It's not like I expected. I'm thinking here. The way I'm doing it, I'm I'm looping through y inside the the x loop. So I'm starting with x equals zero and looping through all the y's, and so it should do a vertical column of them and then the next vertical column and it looks like it's doing it looks like it's working across diagonally and I don't know if that's just kind of an optical illusion or what it is hmm Let's um, let's make it a hundred turns. I'll just change it right here in the in the monitor. Load A with one hundred. Yeah, which is six forward hexadecimal. Maybe if I watch it for a minute, it'll I'll be able to tell what's going on here. I'm, I'm not sure if it's if there's a problem or if it's just looks funny. Yeah, there is a problem. It, there are some. Well, I thought there was. I thought I saw some cells not changing, but then they did. I think there's I think there's something funny going on. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I don't think it's matching up quite right with my screen locations. Cuz like right there I can see a heart that only has one neighbor and it's not dying. Like those ones on the bottom, they should, most of those should be dying because they only have one neighbor. And I think it's getting, yeah, something, something's a little off. It's going to take a little debugging. Um, but the basic idea is there. Um, just got to debug it and figure out why it's not quite, it's like it's not quite scanning the whole screen. It's scanning parts of it. And I think it's just, it's probably, probably a little something with the offset or something like that. But we're at about an hour, a little over an hour. So I think I'm going to stop right there. Um, that part didn't really take as long as I thought it was going to, but we're not done yet. We've got to debug this, figure out what the problem is with it, and then figure out if there's anything else we want to do to it to make it more interesting. Um, it looks like it just stuck there. Or maybe, maybe it got a hundred. Maybe it got a hundred iterations done. Um, but I think we'll add we'll add some new features to it. We'll we'll set it up so that you can stop it by pressing the space bar or something like that. Um, it might be nice to set it so that you can turn on so that you can like draw the pattern you want to start with. I mean, that would be considerable more work, but it, that might be a way to go with it um, to add some more some more work to this, uh, sharpen it up a little bit. Um, all right, so that's it for this time. Hope that was interesting, and uh, hope we check back again next time. We'll have another one of these up uh, within the week, probably probably less than that. So thanks for watching.